So this is the second half of the last story I was talking about, my stepmom passing. The day, the hour, and minute I sat down for an important meeting, she had tried to contact me 30 times. Um, it was dad and daughter's day. Or it was daughter's recognition day that really struck me as odd because I had gotten a weird message from someone. And when I asked my dad who the person was, he said, I don't know. But I never got a, I'm proud of you, daughter. I love you, daughter. He had done it for my other siblings that were on Facebook, but not me. So the weirdness persisted. And like I said, my stepmom tried to contact me at least 30 times. I never got the messages. They were unviewable, unreadable for some reason. And her death has just struck me as really strange and odd. I can't shake the feeling that something is wrong. Because the first day I messaged my dad, I said, I'm so, so sorry. I love you. He said, I love you too. I said, if you need anything, please message me. I'm here. I'm sorry I can't be at the funeral, uh, but someone will be there from the family. And they were. I had someone stand in for me for the funeral because they knew that I was freaking out. Because when I was a child, my parents were very abusive. Not only my bio, bio mom was abusive, my dad was abusive, so I was shifted from my mom's house to my dad's house where I had a stepmom, and my stepmom was super abusive. Uh, she was a beautician. She used to grab me by the hair and cut my hair off, and she never had anything nice to say. She'd always bend over and say something weird in my ear, and she was super abusive. Anyway, I kept, I kept seeing 222, 222, 222 after this occurrence, and so... The second day after she had passed, I messaged my dad and said, I love you. Is there anything you need? And he said, no, I'm okay. It's just me and my puppy now. We're alone. Da, da, da. And I said, okay, if you need anything, please message me. I love you. The third day when I messaged him and said, I love you, dad, he said, thank you. And he hasn't talked to me, except for the one time. I FaceTimed him, and when I FaceTimed him, he couldn't look me in the eye. But I was also very angry, because when my stepmom passed away, I started to become even more angry. It sparked something in me to tell my story. I had promised myself I wouldn't tell my story until my mom had passed away, because I didn't want to hurt my bio mom. But I didn't realize I was going to have such a moment after my stepmom passed away that I'd actually be encouraged to share what's actually been going on with me. And I just want to say that I feel that there's something underhanded going on. Someone has tried to steal the inheritance that God gave me. The gifts that he gave me were there when I was a child, but I was being molested and laughed at and mocked. I didn't have a lot of friends in school, but I was a gifted child. I always had good grades. I was bilingual. I've always been able to decipher languages. Um, and I've had a lot of just weird, strange gifts that children don't have. So with my stepmom's passing, and she passed the day, the hour, and the minute I sat down to a really important meeting once again, after that, I kept say, seeing 222, 222, 222. And I was like, what's up with this 222? Synchronicity, signs and synchronicities. I still don't know to this day what she was trying to tell me. All I know is when I was a kid, we used to get left up in the mountains for several weeks. Me and my cousins and... Some other people in my family, <clears throat> even, like I said, days and weeks, we got left out there with little camper shells laying on the ground, and our parents would say, see you later, we'll be back in a couple of days, have fun, and we were in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of nowhere, I mean, I was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. so this went on for quite a while in my life where I was left unattended, 
with other children for days at a time in the mountains? Just, and a girl? I mean, I've heard stories of families leaving their children up in the mountains for days at a time, but they were left with food. They were left with uh, a plan. You know, if something were, were to happen, they knew how to get to town. Um, they had walkie talkies, but we were left, just left. Of course we had our sleeping bags and we had the first day's food, but after that, I can't really tell you. I just remember sometimes we would go exploring and at one time I swam into a beaver hut. I swam directly in under the beaver hut, swam up to the beavers, and here I am, a human child girl, <laughs> looking at the beavers and they're going, you know, they're looking at me going, what are you doing in our hut? <laughs> and I'm like, hi beavers, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Will you be my friend? <laughs> so yeah, I've had a lot of strange things happen to me. And I just wanna say in memory of my stepmom, even though she wasn't that great to me, she knows she wasn't. She was so abusive. And at one point I did tell my dad she was really abusive and he said, you're a liar. That's all I've ever heard was I'm a liar. I make stories up. I can't make that stuff up. I can't make up the incest that I witnessed, the abuse of animals, the poaching, the lies, and all of that. I can't make it up. I would never want to make it up. It's so horrible what I saw and what I witnessed. So my word to you now is go with God. Watch over your children. Don't leave them unattended. They're a gift. <laughs>